Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Yes, it's that time of year again. I have went out to get some more movies and other stuff during Black Friday. I just went shopping at stores like Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and even Dollar Tree. Uh, however, um, I'm going to basically split apart with this video because it's going to take a little longer to get through. So the uh, the ones that I got at Walmart, as well as Best Buy, I will just um, show you some of that uh, later. I mean, I know I'm going to be late in the game, and December is coming up, and I'm getting ready for Christmas. So I'm going to be planning on maybe doing some more movie reviews, like even Christmas movie reviews to join, and commercial breaks, uh, you name it, but... I mean, there's a lot of distractions going around that's affecting me, but I do want to keep it up no matter what, so we'll see. But right now, I'm just going to do a video showing you the DVDs and Blu-rays that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I know I buy a lot of them at Dollar Tree all the time. Uh, well, during those months, I'm not going to show you those ones that I got because that's going to take forever. But that's okay because I want to leave that as it is. I just rather show you the ones that I got uh, during Black Friday, which to me would would make it uh, even better. So here we go. Because I had to go to free locations as usual. You know, I had to go to Tahunga, Sun Valley, and even Glendale to find them. But I know there are other locations that I've been to that would actually have more. Maybe they have some of them at random, you name it. Um, however, we, we never have much time for other things, so you know we I don't want to be like you know spending you know like tons of hours you know having to search to find what I'm looking for. But if I thought about it, maybe I will. <laughs> Because I know it's not going to be easy, because I know I've seen several YouTube videos where I know some random person around actually went to Dollar Tree and they found some of these other titles that I was expecting to see in my location, but I ended up getting like a whole different batch. So. Yeah, I mean, no kidding. I mean, this happens all the time. And that really bothers me. Since I know Dollar Tree is available nationwide, um, for those that actually have one in each of their locations, so it, it happens all the time. But who knows? I mean, if you end up uh, going to those locations, you'll be lucky to find some. But here we go. Uh, I'm going to start with my first batch. Um, so they're sort of mixed in together, so I have it on two bags right here. So I, I just took out the, those titles from that bag, and here we go. Uh, the one that I got, there were some MGM uh, reissues that we were getting. I never thought I would see those. I almost felt like they were possibly Dollar Tree exclusives, but technically they were being the distributed by an independent company known as Deuce Entertainment uh, LLC. Um, I had to do some research on that. It's a company uh, that provided um, distribution for physical media so that not only would include movies and TV shows but it can also be video games and other stuff. And they actually work for so some several major studios as they can provide so that way they can keep it up and one of them of course happened to be MGM so there you go um, so I got the movie From Mama from the Train yeah a comedy classic with Billy Crystal Danny DeVito who also directed the film this was the second film that he directed theatrically since his first movie was The Ratings Game which is a TV movie that aired on Showtime and Anne Ramsey from The Goonies um, I'm sure you already know the story it's about a struggling writer who's a teacher 
who unfortunately have found out that his wife um, had actually, uh, well, particularly lied about how she wrote this novel and pretty much stole everything from him. So he was planning to actually kill her. Meanwhile, uh, his student um, has to deal with his overbearing mother because he had to write a story and, they, and his plan was, which he didn't want to deal with this himself, was that they wanted to make a, a switcheroo by having him kill his mother while he would end up killing his wife. Like it's a uh, yeah, crisscross uh, Hitchcock type of story right there. Of course, because you know, he did watch a Hitchcock movie. Um, it's, a, it's yes, it's enormously funny. I loved it. I watched this um, ever since I was a kid. Uh, I have this on DVD too. Uh, that was the uh, previous MGM release that actually has extras, uh, but the transfer was only in full screen. It's open mats, but that's good. I know there's a Blu-ray release of it too. Um, that I'm sure they put it in in the matted uh, widescreen that they had to offer. So I'm sure this is also in widescreen as well. And <laughs> there you go. You don't see any uh, features included on this set. It just uh, just says the rating PG-13, uh, the year, the color. The minutes, yeah, it's it's a fast-paced movie. Uh, Adobe Digital, NTSC, and DVD video. Yeah, but you notice you can see the MGM logo. This this is a brand new logo, and you can definitely see on the bottom how different it is. Yeah. And I noticed that when I did open um, two of the DVDs, which I'm going to show you uh, afterwards. Um, it turns out that these releases are bare bones, so there's no features at all. They didn't show an FBI warning at the beginning, or maybe I was expecting they'll show it at the end, I'm not so sure. But they didn't show the MGM DVD logo that they often show at the beginning, so instead it's just a movie. So it's almost like I'm watching a bare bones screening copy of the same film. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Pretty cheap, isn't it? <laughs> but hey, for a dollar, can't go wrong. Um, speaking of which, uh, I got another MGM title. I actually got several of them because uh, there were actually several more titles that they have in other locations too that I was hoping I would find, but no dice. Uh, there is a few more I would have picked up too, but I decided to leave it at that way. Uh, I'll probably maybe go back and see if I can find some more, and I'll take my chances. But I, I just want to be able to save up my money and save up everything here, because you know we've been overspending. <sighs> I'm sure I have. Um, I got uh, State of Grace. A very powerful, underrated uh, crime drama uh, with Sean Penn, Gary Oldman, and Ed Harris. Uh, it's an Irish mob that's set in Hell's Kitchen, where um, it's a drawn tale of betrayal, redemption, guilt, and all. Uh, I'm glad to find this too. I, I've been trying to look for this movie for a long time. Uh, I did actually tape this on Cinemax a long time ago. It's a great film. Roughly this came out um, when Goodfellas was coming out and yeah roughly at the same time which this movie um, fell under the radar but Goodfellas unfortunately became the biggest hit and would soon become you know, Oscar nominated and all. I mean it didn't win Best Picture like we were hoping it would but 
because that went to Dances with Wolves. But it did became a memorable film and, an, and a mesmerizing picture. But this movie should definitely join in with it. Um, we also had another film that same year called The King of New York, another mob picture, and also The Godfather Part 3. Yeah, to join in. Which that came out later. So, 90, 1990 was the year where we were getting those kind of pictures. Uh, then I got uh, Feast of Love. It's a romantic drama with a all-star cast such as Morgan Freeman, Greg Kinnear, Red Hat Mitchell, Billy Burke, Selma Blair, yeah, and all the rest that are available here. Um, I'm not so sure if I ever saw this movie, but I thought this is worth the purchase, so I should check it out. But it's nice to get it for just a buck. <laughs> Uh, then I got some um, Woody Allen titles. Uh, I do have another one in the other batch. So I'm going to show you that. Uh, I have uh, Stardust Memories uh, with not only Woody Allen, but you also got Charlotte Ramping, Jessica Harper, you know, from Suspiria and Phantom of the Paradise. Uh, you got Marie, Christine Baralt, Tony Roberts. Um, basically, it's just um, I mean, it's well, I I don't want to explain too much of the, uh, the description here. I just just want to show you exactly what I have here. But it's actually a an excellent film to check out. Especially if you're into Woody Allen. Uh, then I got Zillig with Allen and Mia Farrell. Yeah. <laughs> you can see right here. Uh, going back to Stardust Memories. <laughs> yeah, just see what it looks like. Sorry. Um, and uh, I guess I forgot to show you <laughs> um, these in the back too for State of Grace and Peace of Love. I want to see what the back is. Another Woman uh, with Philip Bosco, Betty Buckley from Carrie, Ed Bright Dander, Sandy Dennis, Mia Farrell once again, Gene Hackman, Ian Holm. Uh, John Houseman, Martha Plimpton, Gina Rollins, David Ogan Stiers, and then Harris Union, uh, which is written, of course, by Woody Allen, and he also directed it too. He's not in the movie. Um, it's a fascinating drama. Okay. I also got the the family. Finally. I've been trying to look for this movie for years. I know they have a Blu-ray of this, I, which unfortunately is pretty tough to find. But it's nice to pick up the DVD for a change. Um, I did do the review of this movie a long time ago. I'm sure you already know the story by now. It's about a mob boss uh, joining in with his family. They're about to move to another location just to get away from all these other uh, you know, gangsters who are, so they had to want to live in France, you know, hoping to have the good life until something goes wrong, so, get the idea. I mean, he has Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer, Tom Lee Jones, uh, joining in with Diane Aguan from Glee, and John D. Leo. Yeah, so it's a great movie. Pretty underrated too, because it was produced by Martin Scorsese, but joining them with Luc Besson. 
Speaking of Scorsese, <laughs> I got Silence with Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson. And definitely a gorgeous film to check out for the performances. I mean, I'm not big on Adam Driver, but I'll take it for what it's worth. I mean, he has some good films that he's done. I mean, I guess because, you know, I've been stuck in the mode with with Star Wars and and that inside uh, Llewellyn and Davis come to mind, but I don't know. I know recently he's, he was doing the movie with Ridley Scott called House of Gucci and and The Last Duel. So, so I know he's keeping up with the pace, but Andrew Garfield, on the other hand, is just doing a new movie called Tick, Tick, Boom that's on Netflix. So it's nice that he's still doing some work. And I know Liam Neeson's still doing more movies. Uh, he just did The Marksman recently. I haven't checked that out. Anyway, uh, okay. Next, I got Napoleon. This is a uh, yeah, story of a a young puppy going on his um, animal adventure and you know, discovering small journeys and all. Yeah. It's a charming family film, uh, as you can see. Yep. Ah, uh, okay. I got Gumby, <laughs> childhood classic and childhood favorite that I watched uh, when I was a kid. I mean, yeah, I used to watch this when it was on Fox 11, which at this point on, it was already becoming a Fox station at this, uh, like sometime in the mid 80s. And I think I recall Gumby being on Channel 14 as well. Uh, before Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network picked it up uh, later in the 90s. But I know Me TV have played it as well, but I only had uh, a few Gumby DVDs that I found so far. But this is a Christmas um, with, that's fully remastered with the original soundtrack, so you get to see you know, Gumby joining in with Pokey and the rest of his friends and family and you know, going for their high adventures. Um, this is of course for the you know, Christmas adventures that they're doing. Showing all of his antics. Yeah. <laughs> so they're all here. Uh, in this slip cover. Okay. And I finally found uh, Hey Arnold the movie. Yeah, the first movie. that came out in theaters back in 2002 because I do have um, the complete series on DVD that was uh, released by Shelf Factory yes and it's in one of my all the shelves that I have with all these DVDs and Blu-rays around so it's on the yellow one and of course I do have the Jungle movie to join in too which I got that uh, my birthday uh, back in 2018 yeah, it's about uh, football-headed himself, uh, Arnold, uh, joining in with his friends um, to save the neighborhood from turning into a a shopping mall by this uh, evil uh, realtor. I guess you get the idea <laughs> what this is about. Um, but I always love Hey Arnold. You know, joining in with all the rest of the Nicktoons of Doug, Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, Avro Monsters, um, yes, even SpongeBob, and the Angry Beavers, and Rockles Burn Life. Yeah. yeah. I don't care about Cat Dog. I skipped that. There's other Nicktoons to join, but mm, I'm fine for the ones I love. Now I'm going to get to the next one. I got some Star Treks. 
uh, as well as the DVDs so I'm just going to show you right now. Uh, one is uh, A Voyage Home which is the best Star Trek movie that I ever loved in my opinion. I mean granted I, I do love uh, the first movie as well as uh, the second movie the Wrath of Khan, that's also the best one too, and The Search of Spock. I'm, even though I'm not much of a <laughs> you know, Trekker or Trekkie fan, but my father is, <laughs> granted. But um, it's always nice to watch it every now and then. Uh, this is where the Enterprise crew decided to go on a mission to save humpback whales in uh, modern day San Francisco so it's like a time traveling movie in a way and of course um, they're going to try to stop um, the Klingon known as the bird of prey from harming uh, had Catherine Hicks in the movie too from Child's Play but it's always nice to see you know the original crew you know, teaming up to do what they can. Then I got another Star Trek movie, which is the worst one, called The Final Frontier, which um, they had a renegade Vulcan who was um, hijacking the Enterprise to find a mythical planet. So, of course, they're going to try to stop him for what he was doing. Uh, this was a trouble production beyond its release. I know uh, William Shatner who directed this. And I guess he was trying to challenge uh, Leonard Nimoy because he did direct it, The Boy's Home. Um, was he was trying to come up with a an excellent Star Trek adventure that has a lot of great story to join, not to mention you know friendship of the Enterprise crew. Uh, I would say the best part of them all was when there was a heartwarming story when they were just on vacation, you know, Spock, Kirk, and Bones together. You know, well, you know, Kirk was mountain climbing and and Spock has this jet pack uh, built in that he had flying around and and then of course Bones, you know, was about to sing the song Roll 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 Your Boats while they were just you know having a campfire. <laughs> to me those were the best moments. But the rest of the film, mm, not so much. So if you like it that's fine, but I didn't think it was that good. But whatever. For a dollar, what can you do? And of course, I got another buff for the Next Generation crew of, of the Enterprise. Got Star Trek First Content, and this is the best one of the uh, Next Generation crew that we have, with uh, Patrick Stewart as John Luke Picard uh, joining in with uh, uh, Riker, played by Jonathan Franks, who also directed this. Um, which is a story about the Borgs and that's where we meet the Borg Cream played by Alex Craig uh, we also have um, Ever Woodard, James Cromwell uh, joining in with LeBar Burton, Brent Spiner Gates McFadden, Arena Sirtis yeah. and I was actually told about this but um, when I was at Inclusion Films, uh, I found out that our DP, the teacher named uh, Henrik Sediman, actually worked on this movie. I couldn't believe it. He actually worked on this. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. Um, okay, and there's some more Star Treks that I got, uh, but it's mostly the. Um, the next generations. So I hope I can find some more Star Trek uh, movies on Blu-ray, maybe DVD, whatever. There's also 4K though, 
they just recently got the first four so far. So maybe I'll take a truck on that. But I got some more of these. So these are the next generation ones, uh, which has Star Trek uh, Generations. Yes, which is like a time traveling movie, as it seems, where you get to see uh, John Luke Picard and Captain Kirk, you know, together to stop this uh, madman played by Malcolm McDowell, you know, from A Clockwork Orange, because he's gonna pretty much change. Uh, He's pretty much going to do a lot of crazy things, you know, with the amount of energy. So he's going to pretty much, you know, take over. Of course, I, you already know First Contact. So I'll show you the Blu-ray. <laughs> uh, then you got Insurrection. Which I think it's a decent movie in my opinion. I, I didn't think it was that bad at all. Uh, I love the villain, played by F. Murray Abraham one of the uh, another Klingon type and it had Donna Murphy it's sort of a this is basically the etern, eternal view that was happening they went over there to discover and then well you get the idea <laughs> uh, I did remember uh, where our burden uh, fortunately you know he now gets to see <laughs> And he was blind all this time, and now he finally now gets to see more. And, and of course, Riker, as he shaved, started to look almost like how he was in, in the series. <laughs> and then there's Nemesis, uh, which is the worst one. Um, this is where we got, uh, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> Tom Hardy in one of his earlier roles. Uh, he was, I think he was the villain in this movie, I believe. Um, basically, um, this actually uh, brings in a link to uh, John Luke Picard's character and what's going on and what's happening. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to talk more about this, but I just want to show you exactly what these. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm starting to sound a little big here, but I just want to keep up. This is just a lot to get through. I got Zoolander, finally on Blu-ray. I had this on DVD, and I also have the soundtrack to join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you get the idea with this, this comedy. Okay, has a lot of great features to join, uh, all of which are ported from the um, the DVD. I know when they released this on Blu-ray a long time ago, um, it was a Walmart exclusive, and for some reason, they dropped uh, half of the features uh, from the set. Like they were supposed to have the music video included, and all these other ones, but I guess somehow they they took those off, you know, just so they could fit all the stuff in there. So they knew they made a mistake. But I'm glad they fixed that problem. Okay, then I got uh, Fences with Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. This is a great film. Um, uh, then I got Downsizing with uh, Matt Damon. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Um, it's a movie where <laughs> we begin to see uh, how shrunk uh, Matt Damon's character is. I guess you could say it's a sort of like an adult version of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, in a way. <laughs> it's, uh, of course, written by and directed by, uh, who was also a producer, Alexander Payne, who, um, for those who don't know, of course, he had did films like um, About Schmidt, and then, he, of course, he was responsible for Jurassic Park 3. Go figure. Yeah, he might be the blame for that. I mean, when he wrote the screenplay. And uh, he also did Citizen Roof, an election. Yeah. Okay. 
Then I got The Summer of All Fears. Yeah, one of the Jack Ryan movies. Yeah, with Ben Affleck playing a very young Jack Ryan. Yeah, with Morgan Freeman. Uh, along with uh, Lee Schreiber, Philip Baker Hall, um, Bruce McGill, yeah, and even James Cromwell, among others. Uh, the only Jack Ryan films I do love, of course, are uh, The Hunt for Red October, which had Alec Baldwin playing a very young uh, Jack Ryan as we know it. Yeah, with Sean Connery, God vs. Soul, James Earl Jones, uh, Scott Glenn, Tim Curry, Sam Neill, and, and the rest of the cast included. And then we had Patriot Games, which, which Harrison Ford took over, um, which also focuses on his family, you know, um, Ann Archer, Poor Birch, and the villains, of course, was played by Sean Bean. Uh, I know Samuel Jackson's in the movie too, and then we also had um, Clear and Pleasant Danger, which also Ford reprises role um, along the rest, and, and it had uh, Win the Foe in the movie and all the rest. Yeah. Um. I would say this is the worst one, but what can you do? But it's supposed to take place. There's also uh, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruits. I don't have that film, but I'll I'll take it when, whenever I find it somewhere. They do have it a big lot still, uh, so maybe I'll get it for like five bucks or so. <laughs> Otherwise, if they have it at Dollar Tree, I'll pick it for a dollar. <laughs> And then I got some more MGM and some, maybe just one more Paramount title to join. And, and I'm just going to keep on going because I know there's so many of them I have to choose. Uh, I got Posse. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Posse. With uh, Mario Ben Peebles. It's a western. Uh, that's supposed to be... Um, an untold story about uh, the Wild West that was happening, you know, with the entire crew, you know, together, you know, fighting all these other bad guys and all. <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie. Um, underrated too. Uh, then I got American Buffalo with Dustin Hoffman, as well as um, Dennis Franz from NYPD Blue. As well as some Brian De Palma films. He was also in the movie Die Hard 2. And uh, Sean Nelson from Fresh. Yeah. It's uh, it's from David Mammoth. Yeah, he wrote the screenplay. Uh, but it was directed by Michael Carante. Yes. Basically. You know, it's about you know, two guys who um, who just work at this uh, junk place where they are pretty much like a uh, like a rundown uh, pawn shop type of place where suddenly this one um, protege just found a an American buffalo nickel that's worth uh, ninety dollars. It's the kind of story that they had. I got Maul Flanders uh, with Morgan Freeman, as well as uh, Robert Wright and Stalker Channing. As you can see, Assassination Tango with Robert Duvall. Excellent movie. Kind of like the idea where you have a a hitman. You got an assassin, a very professional assassin, and trying to go after this um, this crook and all. And then you got Tangle to join in, although at this break he's going to be the one who's going to be assassinated or, or all.
Air Metals Rising film. Um, Robert Duvall also produced and wrote and directed himself with Francis Ford Coppola as the executive producer for the film, so that's cool. I got Jason's Lyric. I talked about this in one of my other reviews because Bokeem Warpbine's in those movies. Uh, this is a very powerful romantic drama, but it, uh, it's also a crime drama as well. With wonderful performances by Alan Payne, Bokeem Woodbine, and Jada Pickett Smith, uh, which was before, at the time when she was known as Jada Pickett. But it also has Eddie Griffin and Forrest Whitaker in the movie. And it's already open too, because I had to check, see how the DVD is. And see, this is what it looks like too, and clear. This is going to go on and on and on. <laughs> I got True Heart with uh, Kirsten Dunst and Zachary Ty Bryan from Home Improvement. Yeah, he played Brad on the show. See, hard to believe that he's not the only Home Improvement uh, cast member to do a Wild Adventure because I know Jonathan Terry Thomas was in Wild America uh, that same year. Unfortunately, though, True Heart came out in 1999, straight to video. I'm not so sure if it actually had a theatrical release at this point on, but it probably never did. I'm not so sure, because I know Orion Pictures uh, was being bought by MGM at the time, and, and I know they, they had released some movies here and there. They're trying to keep this going before... MGM eventually absorbed Orion in late 1999, so now they went ahead and and I know United Artists became an art house label, so now they had to focus on several of those movies while Orion had stopped you know, producing and movie making movies until it finally got its revival in 2013 as well as 14, because they had the television division to be revived so they could do Paternity Court. And that way they continue to do some more movies, mostly independent films, before they had been revived again, just to start releasing some uh, many major uh, projects of any kind. So now they're going to start releasing films like, let's say, Bill and Ted's uh, Face the Music, and the Child's Play remake, and all these other Orion films that they were going to put out. That's the case. Uh, but it's a truly underrated film, so check this out if you ever do. I got uh, Stanley and Iris, uh, a romantic drama with uh, Robert De Niro and Jane Fonda. Uh, which was directed by Martin Ritz. Uh, at the time, though, this was uh, Jane Fonda's last film before she made a comeback in 2005 with Monsters in Law with Jennifer Lopez because she had to concentrate on her uh, workout videos that she was doing at the time. Yeah, she was very popular with all these workout videos that she was providing uh, back in the 80s and the 90s as well and so on. So. And this is a pretty delightful film because it's a story about a cook who's very shy, literally, yeah, because he can't read, but unfortunately he falls in love with this beautiful woman who's a widower, but she's also a teacher. Apparently she made a vow never to love again, but somehow when they both meet each other, I mean, it seemed like, you know, love is going to be coming back in the air again if this keeps up. So, of course, she teaches him how to read. And hopefully, maybe she'll have some love again. And who knows? So, it's a great movie. And very underrated. 
Andre. <laughs> yes, uh, I got Andre. That's double featured with Arc the Tail. Uh, two um, excellent uh, family adventures. Andre was based on a true story about this young girl who found a seal and be friends with. Uh, of course, uh, Tina Margarino uh, played the girl. Well, of course, I know she was in the movie Karina Karina that same year. And then later she went on to do uh, Waterworld. And then a few years later she did Alice in Wonderland, which is the NBC uh, Hallmark uh, TV movie. And, of course, Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought she's an underrated uh, actress. Yeah, she really was. And his Arc the Tale, uh, which had Queen Latifah narrating the story and focusing on polar bears uh, along with walruses and all. Yeah, so if you love March of the Penguins, where they focus on the penguins, then you're going to love this movie. So that you can see the polar bears and, and the walruses. Okay, and I guess you soon couldn't forget uh, this demented, bizarre, dark comedy, Vampire's Kiss, with Nicolas Cage, who plays a pretentious jerk, who un unfortunately wants to uh, dating this um, mysterious uh, vampirist, who of course got bitten by her, and then he wants to becoming completely nuts, thinking that he's now becoming a vampire. He's already going around tormenting his secretary, Alva. He was played by Maria Conchito Alonso. And the mysterious vampire lady, by the way, was played by Jennifer Beals from Flashdance. And you get the idea what the story's about. I mean, <laughs> everything from Cage's uh, expressions that he's done, that facial expression that he was doing when when he was confronting Alva to find all these files that, that are in alphabetical order, or the fact that he's saying to his uh, psychiatrist his alphabet and, and all, and the fact that he's acting like a vampire, you know, he started using those plastic uh, vampire teeth, yeah, and he goes to clubs, you know, he meets all these girls who he eventually just fucks with and all. It's a crazy movie, as you can see. And I guess the best part of this release, too, was, well, it's it's probably not going to be on there anyway, because it's bare bones, was that they had a commentary uh, with Cage and the director, uh, Robert Bergman. It's very good to listen to, actually. Uh, there was a Blu-ray release of this. It does have the commentary included. Uh, but that went out of print. So I guess if you had to search for the one with the commentary, you have to get the older release uh, on DVD if you can. But, but hey, for a dollar, what the hell. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And there's another um, Woody Allen movie called The Purple Rose of Cairo. Uh, this is a great film uh, with Mia Farrow, Jeff Daniels, and Danny Aiello, which pretty much predates uh, Last Action Hero in a way, where this um, waitress named Cecilia, who unfortunately is addicted to um, movies. We all can relate to that because, you know, we're movie buffs and all. She just goes out uh, to see a movie that she loves, but the mo the one movie that she's been seeing so many times is this film, where at this rate, uh, Jeff Daniels' character suddenly pops out, you know, he just makes a, he breaks the fourth wall and he just pops out a screen and, and he escapes so he can discover the entire world and plus, you know, you probably get to know uh, Cecilia. She wants to escape from her husband, played by Dania Yellow, because uh, she didn't want to deal with all these arguments and all. 
Yeah, I don't blame her. <laughs> but great film. I also got New York, New York with Liza Minnelli and Robert De Niro. It is also directed by Mars Scorsese. Let's see. Definitely, it's a uh, a musical spectacular that came out uh, in 1977. Um, quite different from most of these Scorsese films that we had, but it's worth it. And I got uh, Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag with Joe Pesci. Yeah, it's a dark comedy where he plays a, a gangster's uh, delivery man who had to take out a double bag full of eight dead gangster heads um, straight into the mob boss from the airport but unfortunately got bumped into this uh, young uh, man who's, uh, who's the fiance of, of Quincy Swanson's character yeah they're about to get married uh, but they're just about to go on vacation, about to meet the parents, uh, played by uh, George Hamilton and Diane Cannon, which unfortunately they end up spotting the the eight heads inside a duffel bag. Uh, you also got David Spade to join in, too, as his uh, best friend. Um, and by the way, it's Andy Kumu, who's uh, one of the stars of the... Uh, fiance. Uh, it, it, for those who don't know, of course, he's from the movie uh, One Hour Photo with Robin Williams. I didn't care for that film, though, that much, but I know pe some people love it, so it's okay. Um, and I know he was in the uh, some comedies, but he was also in the music video by Will Yankovic, you know, remember Gump? <laughs> Yeah, where he eventually plays Forrest Gump. Yeah, that's him. Um, it's kind of a dumb comedy, but you know what? I could take it. I mean, it's worth a buck, and I've seen it before uh, several times on Showtime. So, it's what it was. Um, but I'll say this, Joe Pesci was also the main reason to see it. Because <laughs> he's always worth watching. No matter what no matter what Wally does, you know, whenever it's a Martin Scorsese picture that he's done with Robert De Niro, or he's done like several pictures where he does go over the top and all, and of course Home Alone, <laughs> he's always fun. Luke, uh, this is perfect to get for a dollar because uh, I actually want to check this movie out. Um, it's, it's a family film where I guess you could say this was long before we had a film called A Dog's Purpose. This was also a movie about uh, reincarnation. It's a story about a workaholic father with a wife and son who unfortunately was working with his friend. He got killed and he got reincarnated by this uh, very cute puppy right here. And at this rate he grew and and started to become the life of the adventure. It's a very fascinating family story, and it was worth the purchase. Uh, there are more MGM titles. Some I could have picked up, but I just wanted to leave it there. But maybe I'll find some more when I go to Dollar Tree. Um, maybe I'll go in December or January or any other month to see what happens, if there's any more left. Because I've seen some other places where they had the other random uh, MGM titles like Men at Work, Courage Mountain, as well as another Woody Allen film, Shadows and Fog. I think there's Mike and Radio Days too, and maybe some other ones too. Who knows? I mean, I hope when I go back there I'll be able to find some more. It's not going to be easy. And I hope I could find some more Blu-rays too, and I guess I could try to track down some more Star Trek movies to put together, see what happens. But anyway, those are my Dollar Tree finds. I know it's, it was difficult for me to go through them, and I know I started to sound a little vague on this video, but I do my best to keep up. It's not easy, 
it's really hard. <laughs> but here we go. Uh, I'll get to the other ones uh, later because I have to keep up with a lot of things right now. So that's all. Anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.